So this week we're going to talk about early numeracy CBM. Because numeracy skills are so important to learn in the first few years of a child's schooling, early assessment is pivotal in grades K and 1. We know that acquiring a sense of numbers and numeracy skills is essential to later understanding and performance in math and in critical thinking. So here we're going to talk about how we go about accurately assessing these kinds of early skills. So math and early numeracy CBM can be used to quickly screen and monitor math progress. When we do this, we assess number sense, operations, patterns, relationships, data and probability, measurement, data and statistics, geometry, and even algebra. And these areas are consistent with the recent recommendations of the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, or the NCTM, regarding the curriculum focal points for grades pre-K through 8. So we're going to go over this week oral counting, number identification, quantity discrimination, and missing number. First, there are two general approaches to counting as an early numeracy CBM. We can do oral counting CBM or touch counting CBM. Oral counting CBM is as simple as the student counting orally, starting at one, and going as high as she can. Touch counting CBM adds a dimension of one-to-one -one correspondence by including the action of associating each number with the item being counted. So for this, we start with the task of students orally counting starting at one. We have standardized directions. Our scoring comes from the numbers attempted minus the errors to give us total correct per minute or total correct over total attempted to give us a percent correct. In order to make valid, normative, national, state, district, or even school decisions, we have to standardize as much as we can, starting with the directions and including the administration of the probe and scoring changes in the presentation of the probes, any alterations to the instructions given to students, or inappropriate use of the probes as a teaching instrument can invalidate any decisions made or conclusions about the student performance that you might draw. We start with the same instructions every time. When I say start, I want you to start counting aloud from one, like this, one, two, three, until I tell you to stop. If you come to a number that you don't know, I will tell it to you. Be sure to do your best counting. Are there any questions? Wait for the student and answer questions that the student may have, and then say, ready, start. The examiner's copy looks like this. Let's listen to an example. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventy, eighty, ninety, one. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 70, 80, 90, one. That's it. So just like in the reading CBM, we put a bracket where the student stopped, and any errors we would tally for the total number of orally counted numbers. In this case, it was 19. She had zero errors, and so her correct oral count is going to be 19. When it comes to oral counting and touch counting scoring, we look for these errors, a mispronunciation or a substitution, an omission where they skip a, a number entirely, hesitation without a response, that's that three-second rule, a reversal, so for instance, if the student said 5, 6, 8, 7, that would be a reversal. Or skipping numbers, individuals, or an entire row. Things that sound like errors but are not errors are self-correction in three seconds, dialect issues or accent issues, these are counted as correct. Repetitions are correct but only once. So there's no extra credit for counting if the student said 5, 6, 7, six, seven, uh, and inserted numbers, those are just not counted. So if they insert a number that's not in the sequence, but then move on, it's just not counted at all. Remember, if a student makes an error, they are not corrected. Only when they hesitate for three seconds, then the number is provided. All right, the next one is number identification. For this, our task is students will identify the name of a numeral up to 20, and this can vary depending on the publisher, like if you're using AmesWeb or different, uh, different companies. Again, we use standardized directions, and our scoring is the attempted numbers minus the errors to give us total correct per minute. We can also look at the total correct divided by the total attempted to give us a percent of correct. With number identification, we use these standardized directions. Look at the paper in front of you. It has a number on it. What number is this? Based on the response, follow the specific prompting procedure. The paper in front of you has its numbers on it. When I say start, I want you to tell me what the numbers are. Start here and then point where they're going to start and go across the page. 
If you come to a number that you don't know, I will tell, it, tell you what to do. Are there any questions? Put your finger on the first one. Ready? Start. So the examiner sheet looks very similar. You're going to see the numbers are randomized and you're simply going to point at the top and go across the page and let the student identify those numbers. After the time is up, we're going to count the total number attempted, then we're going to count up the number of errors, and then once we subtract that, we will get the number of correctly identified numbers. With our errors and scoring, again, if there's a mispronunciation or substitution, or an omission, a hesitation without a response, or a skipped number, a skipped number of an individual number or a row, that's counted as an error. It's not an error when they self-correct in three seconds, if there's an accent or dialect issue, uh, if there's a repetition, or if they have inserted a number that's, in, that's not correct. Again, attempted numbers minus the errors gives us the total correct per minute, and the total correct divided by total attempted gives us the percent correct. Remember, if a student makes an error, we don't correct them here. They hesitate for three seconds, and we can, told them, we can tell them, try the next one. So what should our goals be, or what are the norms for number identification? When we're looking at grades kindergarten and first grade, and we're talking about doing this in fall, and then winter, and then spring, you can see here that with kindergarten, we're looking for the fall should be about 14, uh, and then first grade, we're looking at 34. You can see we've got our standard deviation is in the next category, or in the next column. Then we've got our winter, we want to see an improvement for kindergarten up to about 45, first grade up to about 53. Again, the next column shows our standard deviation, which is going to be within the norm. And then spring NID, we've got 56 for kindergarten and 62 for first grade. Next column shows our standard deviation. And then you can see our weekly growth here in the last column. The next early numeracy CBM that we can do is quantity discrimination. For this, the students are shown two different numbers and they're asked to identify which one is bigger. Let's look at an example. When I say begin, I want you to tell me which number is bigger. Okay, you're gonna try each one. If you come to one that you don't know, I'll tell you what to do, okay? We're gonna go across the page. Are you ready? Go. Five, seven, eight, 18, 10, 8, 16, 9, 10, 6, 14, 9, 12, 15, 10, 17, 6, 10, 15, 6, 5. Very good. 8, 9, 16, 9, 8, 19, 1, 5, 10, 16, 14, 2, 10, 7, 8, 9, 12, 9, 18, 13, 17, 8, 15, 18, 18, 9, 7, 8, 15, 8, 14, 10, 8, For quantity discrimination, you may see the numbers in a box like we have on the right that we just saw in the example, or you may see something like what's on the left where there's actually dots for the student to count. Now for this, when we look at scoring, we're actually going to slash through their errors. We're going to follow the three second rule and we're going to say try the next one. For quantity discrimination, we don't provide a number. If the student skips a row, each one is an error, so you'll cross it out. Common errors for quantity discrimination are going to be things like the student names a wrong number, like one teen. They give a three second pause and they don't respond or self-correct or they skip an item. Some things that look like errors but are not errors are when the student corrects, self-corrects within three seconds or any dialect or articulation issue. If the student makes an error, they are not corrected. Only when they hesitate for three seconds are they then told, try the next one. And the last early numeracy CBM is for missing numbers. With this, students are shown a set of two numbers and a blank in the first, middle, or last position. Students are then asked to identify the number that's missing. The numbers are sequential, although some other forms might include skip counting or number patterns like twos, fours, sixes, etc. We use standardized instructions saying to the student, 
The box in front of you has two or three numbers in it. I want you to tell me the number that goes in the blank. Which number goes in the blank? If correct, then you follow the prompting procedures and try the second example. If incorrect, follow the correction and then prompting procedures before the second example. The paper in front of you has boxes with numbers in them. When I say start, you are going to tell me the number that goes in the blank for each box. Start with the first box and go across the row. You should point here. Then go to the next row. If you come to one you don't know, I'll tell you what to do. Are there any questions? Put your finger on the first one. Ready? Start. When we're scoring these, we simply slash through the errors as they're made and we follow the three second rule. If after three seconds the student hasn't responded, we say try the next one. We do not provide the number. If the student skips a row, cross it out and mark the entire row wrong. Scoring here is very similar to the last one. If they name a wrong number or if they give a three second pause with no response or a skipped item, those are all marked as errors. Self-correction within three seconds or pronunciation, articulation, or dialect issues are not considered errors. So you can see in this example we've got the blanks for the student and once we get to the third row the student has an error in that first column. Uh, the student missed the 10 so I have a slash through that and there are no additional errors. You can see the bracket after the number 12 in the middle column of the fourth row because that's where the student stopped at the timer. We're going to calculate the total number of missing numbers, the total number of errors, and the total uh, correct missing numbers. Looking at the norms, we can see we've got kindergarten and first grade scores here. We're expecting 3 and 9 for kindergarten and first grade in the fall, 10 and 17 in the winter, and 14 and 20 in the spring. You can see the standard deviations in the column to the right of each one of those columns. Okay, I want to offer you some practice time, some skill development opportunities. Uh, and again, I want to give you an additional practice opportunity that allows you to boost your grade. I want you to administer some early numeracy CVMs and create a screencast or a video like this explaining how you score it, and then you'll share that on the discussion board. If you do that, uh, you can get some extra credit. So first of all, if you go to page 118 of your textbook, you will see a list of places where you can get some pre-made probes. Most of them are free. Some of them are not. So I would go for the free ones if it was me. Uh, but you're going to do the scoring of oral counting, number identification, quantity discrimination, and missing number. You can find, if you can find a student or even a neighborhood kid or sibling to do this for you, that would be great. Those individuals who video this and show us that you have scored it, explain the scoring procedures, Fully correct demonstrations of the scoring will give you, I'll give you these two choices. One, you can replace one of your reflections with a full credit score, or I can give a five point addition to your running total for the grade. The video must be viewable, so I suggest you post it on YouTube. I suggest to put it in as unlisted if you don't want other people to see it, uh, and then post the link onto the discussion board. You must correctly demonstrate all four scoring areas to get the choice of a reflection, replacement, or a five point total to your running total. Uh, so good luck, may the odds be ever in your favor.